People matter to God. Last week I spoke about purpose, God's purpose in the presence and person of Jesus seeking and saving the lost. The good news was there's no exclusions. Sinners, tax collectors, scribes, Pharisees, outsiders, insiders are all welcome at the table of God. And this week, we hear the verses from these parables that what matters most to God is people. Now, in the days before smartphones and map quests and GPSs and all the other electronical directional devices that we have, a very prominent and hardworking businessman was driving to an important meeting. It so happened that he was running late that day and discovered that he was lost. He spotted a young boy alongside the road and he stopped and asked the young boy, very impatiently I might add, Son, which way is it to Dover? The little boy kind of looked up at him and said, I don't know. Well, the man said, Do you know which way it is to the main road? The boy looked up at him again and said, I don't know that either. So the man was getting pretty frustrated. He looked at the young boy and said, Well, you don't know much of anything, do you, son? He said, No, I guess I don't. But then I ain't lost either. Right. <laughs> Jesus teaches us many times over the joy of God's experiences when the lost becomes found. We all know how it feels to be lost, to be disoriented, to be confused, to be wandering. Whether it's uncertainty about one's future, about health issues, about financial woes, or challenges of relationships, there is simply no smartphone app that can fix those. Peddlers of the product entice us with pain relief, so to speak, for ways of finding happiness that will change our life. But as we read in the book of Ecclesiastes, it is like chasing after the wind. Now Jesus is a master storyteller. He used stories and images all the time to convey profound theological truths and abstractions to allow people to know that people matter to God. On the canvas that he kind of painted, Jesus first paints a story here of the shepherd seeking a lost sheep. William Barclay, the theologian, provides a helpful background for this parable when he says, if one was to bring reason to this parable, human judgment would label it as foolishness. To leave 99 sheep in order to seek and save one that is lost is bad business and irresponsible. Or to look at it through the lens of faith, could this parable provide a picture of the love of God that is willing to risk everything, even death on a cross, until God finds it. If people truly matter to God, this story illustrates the relentlessness that God has in pursuing those who come to seek and save the lost. Now like sheep, we can look up one day and find that we've been so busy nibbling away on the grass and our heads at the grindstone of life that we look up and find out that we have awakened to the fact that we are lost. We are sheep that have gone astray. As a beautiful movement in the Handel's Messiah says, we all are sheep who have gone astray. So often we have gone astray in ways that seem harmless or in ways that we can easily rationalize or make excuses about. And perhaps those are the most dangerous ways we become lost because we don't even recognize the fact that we are lost. We cloak our phrases to kind of paint over those in different ways. We may say, well, I'm spiritual but not religious or the church is full of hypocrites or an enormous amount of other phrases that people use. But the fact of it is, we are still lost. We worship a relentless God. A God who is willing to put up His Son <coughs> Jesus as an offering of radical grace and a never stop pursuing people. The psalmist says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The 
Good Shepherd cares so deeply and is so committed to the relationship that God will not be satisfied until He draws all people to Himself. Bring all back to the sheepfold. That's how much God thinks people matter. I can't relate to that very well if you're not a sheep farmer. Huh? If you're not a shepherd, maybe that doesn't make any sense to you. Let me share another story that maybe will help a little bit more. Most of you know that I spent a lot of years as a hospital chaplain. In that position, you observe a lot of different things. Some joyful, some sad, some gross, and some just unexplainable. I was listening to StoryCorps the other morning on NPR, and they were telling a story. Now, if you don't know what StoryCorps is, they have, there's books actually you purchase that are really, really interesting to read as well. But they have people share real life stories to the best of their recollection. Uh, and they're fascinating stories to listen to. They're about everything. Very interesting to hear. In this particular story that they had to share the day that I was listening to when I was driving, it reminded me of my chaplaincy days. Because you see, it wasn't uncommon as a hospital chaplain to have someone come in already deceased who had draw, either died at a scene or had died in transit to the hospital. Could have been from a drug overdose, auto accident, a knifing, a gunshot wound, you know, you name it. You, you see it. They come rolling in. A few times I can remember at hospitals coming in where we'd had murder suicides, where someone had killed someone and then turned the gun on herself and killed herself. It's not stuff you get very excited about, I'll tell you, as a chaplain, when you have to have a family go down to the morgue and try to identify somebody that you can hardly identify as human beings sometimes. But nonetheless, it's stuff that happens. Well, this person who was sharing the story on NPR had something pretty similar, and so it, it really touched me. It was a police chaplain from Kansas City, and she was a woman chaplain. She had been called to a crime scene, and at the crime scene, a man had shot and killed his wife and his child, and then had turned the gun on himself. Why? I don't know if that's important for this story, so I'm not going to spend time with it. But what did happen is she was sharing that as they brought the bodies out in body bags, uh, she asked the officer in charge if she could bless them the bodies before they put them into the ambulance. The officer had worked with her for many years, so he was used to her request, so he said, sure. And he, she asked which side is the head, which side is the feet, because if you're a minister or a chaplain, you always pray at the head. Uh, in case you don't know that, when you go to a funeral, if you ever notice where the minister's standing, they're going to be standing at the head of the castle. So the bodies began and came out. And as brought out the wife, the chaplain lowered her hand upon the head and said a blessing. And then as the child came out, she did the same thing. She lowered her hand upon the child and said a blessing. And finally, they brought out the man who had killed his wife and his child and turned the gun on himself. And she said she started to come down and she found that her hand stopped. And she went on from there for quite a while with some interesting and long oratory ideas about theological concepts. Again, it's not necessary for the point that I want to make about this story this morning. I mean, the reality is it's, it would be pretty natural for us to be angry hmm? and to say maybe nasty things about this man. But the matter of the fact is that for Jesus, this is the person who needed mercy and needed blessings more than anyone else. As hard as that is for us human beings to stomach, and it is hard for us to stomach, it's God's way nonetheless. Because regardless of our sins, God loves the lost. That's what these stories are about that were read this morning. Hmm? Let me share another story from 
the scripture this morning is the comparable path. It's the one where the woman loses a coin, her silver coins, and desperately looks every under nook and cranny of her house to find it. And the coin itself is representing about 10 days' earnings and a number of months' savings. And like the image of the shepherd seeking the lost sheep, Jesus paints a picture similar of desperation and relentlessness as a woman searches for a coin. Can't we all identify with this woman's frantic search for something of great value that's missing? I mean, don't miss that moment. It may not be something physical. Hmm? But when you lose something that has great meaning to you, there's a certain amount of frantic anxiety and fear that goes along with it. And so when she finds that coin, the story tells us that she had a sigh of relief and not only did she lie out all her breath, she threw a party, a celebration, joy, community, all bear witness to a God that rejoices when the lost is found. Joy is an emotional parade for God. The sound of heaven's applause, our deep and abiding sense, reminding us that people matter to God. Perhaps the real scandal of these stories that Jesus tells is the fact that, as my seminary professor Park Woods used to say, is we want to put God in a box. Or as I've heard other people say, we really want God to be a domesticated pet. Only these stories offer God as something different than that. That God intrudes and interrupts and disrupts our idea of what we might think God is like and how we want God to behave. Because God is bigger than any extent of our ability to try to limit the extravagant grace of His love for people. When we look into the mirror of our own lives, we should be inspired and be thankful and we should dance with joy. to all those who are feeling lost. And pretty much everybody I've ever met in my entire life at some point feels lost. Those who are feeling, experiencing some sense of confusion, some sense of lostness in their life, the Good Shepherd is seeking you. To all those who are searching for joy, the God of joy in life has already found you and has made a decision upon your life with a resounding yes. You can stop running away and begin to run toward the arms of our Savior Shepherd. People, whatever you've done, whatever you do, you matter to God. You are not only found but you are loved. That is why it is so important during this Lenten season as we are people of Lent, we are the people of the resurrection, the people of Easter, that we reach out beyond our own selves to other people and be God in the midst of community. Because we matter. All people matter to God. I thought that Tim might have this morning wanted to sing the children's song Jesus loves the little children all the children of the world be the yellow, black, or white they are precious in His sight Jesus loves the little children well we're all little children and regardless of what we've done where we've gone what we'll do in the future God still loves us it's the mystery of light it's the mystery of Easter this is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. I would invite